YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. We got another Washington football team video. And in today's video, with their season ending a couple days ago, I just wanted to go over the studs and duds of the 2020 Washington football team season. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL. In this case, I watched the football team. And let's get straight into today's video. Now, I want to say, if your name isn't on this list and you were a stud or a dud, that just means you were irrelevant. And that's due to injury or if you just didn't get any playing time you weren't you're not a stud you're not a dud you're just irrelevant now let's get into this video starting with the offensive studs logan thomas is number one logan thomas was phenomenal man he had his best year of his career this guy is a former quarterback turned tight end and he found a home in washington he had his best year of his career racking up 670 yards six touchdowns and having 72 receptions this guy was phenomenal this year man and i was so happy for logan thomas because he was bouncing around the league and in fact we needed a tight end now i understand a lot of people still maybe want to get it another tight end but hey if we don't we're fine with logan thomas i'm telling you maybe get somebody to back him up or something but he deserves to be the number one guy he played his butt off this year and i just seen a spark in him after that giants game i was like this man is going to be on a mission this year because he was just a different breed after that game and he showed it man he can block and throw he can also run for a big boy 6'6 six, six like him logan thomas was just phenomenal last year of his career stat wise and playing wise next person on my list is rookie running back antonio gibson this guy was a stud i remember draft night me and the whole entire fan base of the Washington football team was questioning the pick we were like hmm Antonio Gibson a running back in the third round when we need another wide receiver to pair up with Terry McLaurin I was questioning the pick and so was the whole Washington football team fan base inside 2020 Kyle Smith knew what he was doing never question Kyle Smith because he's never wrong Antonio Gibson was a complete steal in the draft this guy was phenomenal this season racking up 11 touchdowns a thousand yards from scrimmage this this guy had a phenomenal rookie season not to mention he missed a couple games with the turf toe injury this guy was phenomenal i remember in training camp we questioned them cutting agent peterson and to be honest we found our new bell cow we didn't need agent peterson we were questioning at first and we seen what antonio gibson could do we was like man they made the right decision by going with antonio gibson big things for antonio gibson coming in 2021 and i expect him to go off in 2021 you hear me Next player on my list is yet another running back, J.D. McKissick. This guy had a phenomenal year in 2020. I mean, this guy was everywhere. Another signing that I liked. I like this J.D. McKissick signing. You guys can go back and check the videos from the past when we first signed him. I liked it because I seen his highlights from Seattle. I really thought it was another depth piece. I didn't think he was going to get this much playing time that he did this year, but he took full advantage of his playing time. I remember watching his highlights in Seattle. I was like, this dude was phenomenal all all over the place mid taking handoffs lined up in the slot catching passes out the backfield essentially what he could do here but it was just all about can he get the playing time and can he stay healthy he stayed healthy he played every single game and he took advantage of all his opportunities alex smith really boosted his stats by throwing to him every single time felt looking for the check down every single play this guy had at least 15 targets each and every time alex smith came out there to take snaps for the washington football team i mean he was phenomenal this season running the ball catching Catching the ball, just being a safety blanket up in the slot, getting open, just having bad quarterback play that couldn't give him the ball. <clears throat> Dwayne Haskins. Eddie McKissick was phenomenal this season, man. It was yet another great signing by Kyle Smith and him and Antonio Gibson could be a stud duo for the future and I cannot wait to see what they have in store for 2021 and beyond. Next player on my list, or should I say players, is the whole entire offensive line. I mean, started from Chase Rullier, the man that got the money. He was phenomenal this season, playing in every single game, not missing a snap, and he got played like it. One of the top centers in the league and he got paid like this guy earned every single penny he's phenomenal and he's one of the best centers for a reason and i'm so glad he's on my favorite nfl team because he is phenomenal he is outstanding center you never hear a peep out of him he is healthy never botching a snap always down the field blocking on screens opening up good holes for his running back chase really had a phenomenal season now moving on right to brandon sheriff or should i say the all pro brandon sheriff who is set to make great money this offseason and hopefully it's with us but brandon Brandon Sheriff had a phenomenal 2020, not to mention he got hurt and he came back and he was never 100% but gave it his 
all. He was phenomenal this season. He is close from finishing the season with not having one holding penalty on his record, but he got a bogus call in the playoff game versus Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was bogus. It was a horrible call. To Brandon Sheriff adding yet another Pro Bowl to his record. This guy is phenomenal, and I'm really hoping that we could bring him back. And that just speaks volumes about how good he is playing through injury, and that just speaks volumes about how good John Masco is, the offensive line coach. I mean, I remember when the season first started, we thought we had one of the worst offensive lines in football. John Masco had these guys playing phenomenal football up front. All five of these guys had a heck of a season. Now, moving on right next to Brandon Sheriff is Morgan Moses. My boy Morgan Moses. Everyone in this fan base, including myself, was being harsh on Morgan Moses because he had a horrible 2019 season. He was horrible, and I'm going to be honest, he was holding all the time. But the reason why he was holding is because we, he was playing hurt he played hurt and not to mention he played in every single game every single game of that 2019 season he was in and he was playing hurt that's why he was holding so much and this offseason he took care of his body he lost a few pounds and he was healthy for majority of this year and you've seen a big difference in Morgan Moses when Morgan Moses is healthy he is one of the best right tackles in all of football and he had his best year of his career in my opinion this year because he was healthy and he was able to show his ability to play right tackle at a high level. I mean, you say my boy Morgan Moses pass blocking, keeping that DN in check. Jason Pierre Paul was in check for most of the night. You seen him out there on screen plays, out there on run plays, hitting the second level, putting his body on the line. Morgan Moses is just phenomenal, man. He is a phenomenal right tackle, and I'm so glad that he's on our team. He had his best year of his career, in my opinion, and that speaks volumes of the offensive line coach, John Masco. Now, moving on to the left side of the offensive line, that was really the big question. Who's going to play left guard? Who's going to play left tackle? Wes Schweitzer, three-year, $18 million deal. He played phenomenal. This guy was awesome awesome this year filling in for Wes Martin. Remember, he didn't get the starting gig at the beginning of the year. He took full advantage of it when he finally did, and he was phenomenal. Bouncing from left guard to right guard, whatever you needed him to play, he played it at a high level. Wes Schweitzer was a great signing, and I'm so glad he's on this team for the next two years, and he just had a phenomenal season in his first year. Next player on my list is Cornelius Lucas taking on the heat, taking on the big question, the biggest question of the offseason, who's going to play left tackle and he took on full fledged of that opportunity and he was phenomenal filling in for Jerron Christian man Cornelius Lucas coming into training camp he wasn't looking too good he was on the verge of getting cut he got his opportunity and took full advantage of it and once again that just speaks volumes of John Masco the offensive line coach he was phenomenal this year Cornelius Lucas that is and this whole entire offensive line was and I cannot wait to see what we have to offer in 2021 and hope Hopefully we have the gig back together. Everyone is under contract for next year except for Brandon Sheriff. And hopefully, 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 Kyle Smith gets it done. Now, moving to the duds of the offense. Obviously, Dwayne Haskins, horrible trash, waste of a first-round pick. This past offseason, I expected him to come in here with his head on straight. He looked like he was working hard in his videos. I expected him to kill it this season, and he completely proved me wrong and, and, and made me eat my words because this guy was horrible horrible this year he was immature he didn't take advantage of his opportunities he's bragging about his stats and losses he's just not good he just doesn't have what it takes to be an uh, NFL quarterback and that's from a skill standpoint and from a mental standpoint he is horrible he doesn't have the fundamentals it's a complete miss and I hope we learned our lesson from taking quarterbacks like that in the first round and hopefully we can get it right with the next guy but Dwayne Haskins was a complete miss and he is a dud a big dud he was horrible next person on my list was Steven Sims. I really was expecting Steven Sims to have a big year this year. He's completely had a horrible year this year. I understand injuries took a toll on him early part of the year, but when he came back, he was a non-factor. He was nowhere to be found on punts. He's muffing punts. He's not knowing how to take a proper fair catch. He's not knowing when to take a fair catch. Steven Sims was horrible this year, dropping passes in the clutch. You know what I'm saying? Dropping punts. He was horrible, and like I said, this was Ron Maria's first impression on him, so I'm not going to be surprised 
surprised if he, in fact, gets cut this offseason. Steven Sims was horrible this year, and he's a dud this year. I'm so pissed that I have to put him on this list because I expected him to have a big year, and he completely proved me wrong. He was horrible this year. Next player on my list was Wes Martin. Wes Martin was so bad this year, hence why Wes Schweitzer had to come in here and play. Wes Martin was horrible. Wes Martin, we expected him to have a big 2020 year because 2019, he was filling in well for all the injuries that happened on the back end of the 2019 season. He came in filling in well for the offensive line, and you've seen the potential that he had, and he just didn't carry it over into 2020. I don't know if it's a new scheme, whatever it is, he just didn't fit well, and he got benched early. Ron Rivera gave him the job. He a big red flag earlier in training camp about West Martin. Ron Rivera was just questioning his worth ethic. Guys out here are dying for spots like this, and you're going to come out here playing like this. He was just questioning his worth ethic, and Wes Martin did not take full advantage of his opportunity, and he was quickly benched in favor for Wes Schweitzer. So that is yet another dub. Wes Schweitzer was horrible this year. Next player on my list is controversial because Antonio Gandy Golden was a rookie. I understand that, but he was a dud in my opinion because when he was on the field, he was horrible. He was a non-factor. I understand injuries took a complete toll on his rookie campaign, but when he was out there, he was horrible. He was a non-factor and really just looked lost out there. Now, I understand I might cut him some slack, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this one because he's a rookie. That's hopefully another year to prove me wrong, but the reason why I have him on this list and not Isaiah Wright is because he's one of our draft picks, and we expected big things out of him, not from a stat standpoint, but just from him being able to make plays for the quarterback standpoint. And like I said, yes, injuries took a toll on him, and hopefully, next year he could be much better but this year he was a complete dud Antonio Gandy go to hopefully you're better next year but this year was really a wash and next year is really his official rookie year. Last player on the offense for me is Jeremy Sprinkle. That guy was a dud, man. Really need to talk about Jeremy Sprinkle. The guy was horrible this year. Not being able to recover a punt, not being able to catch passes. He was just horrible, and he's been horrible since he's been here. Only thing he's good for is blocking. I would not be surprised if Jeremy Sprinkle is gone next year. I have some honorable mention studs for the offensive side of the ball. One being Alex Smith. I understand a lot of people want to put Alex Smith in the category as a stud, but I'm basing this off of performance. Performance wise, he did was great coming back playing from a broken leg was phenomenal. But honestly, got us to a five and one stretch. But honestly, his performance wasn't outstanding. It wasn't stud worthy. He yes, like I said, he did well enough to win, but he just wasn't a stud. And if you want to take away that injury, just focus on the performance front. He's not a stud. Next player on my list is Cam Sims. Cam Sims is a guy that I really want to put under studs, but his inconsistency is just a big problem that's holding him back from being a stud. I mean, this guy came from being a practice squad player for the past years under the previous regime to working his way up to being the number two wide receiver on this roster he was really well this season he had a breakout game in his final game in the playoff game 104 yards he was phenomenal this season but I just can't put him under stud because he had some big key drops and he was just inconsistent it's like one day he'll be there then the next game he won't be there it's just like where are you at on a consistent basis and if he can get consistent and be good with his hands he could be a phenomenal I'm the number two in this league. I didn't include Terry McClellan on this list because, I mean, do I really need to include Terry McClellan on this list? He's the best receiver on the team. He's arguably the best player on the team. So, like, he, do I need to really go over Terry McClellan? Now, moving to the defensive side of the ball, Montez Sweat was a complete stud this year. He was the best defensive player, in my opinion, from a consistent standpoint and performance standpoint. He was phenomenal this year. He led the team in sacks. Montez Sweat getting overshadowed by Chase Young, who I believe Montez Sweat had a better year than. He was phenomenal this year. And you could just see a big difference in Montez Sweat 2019 to Montez Sweat 2020. It was just a big jump from Montez Sweat. And I cannot wait to see what he has to offer in 2021. Now, moving to his counterpart. His partner in crime, Chase Young, had a phenomenal 2020 rookie campaign. This is your defense rookie of the year, everyone. He was phenomenal this past year, and I'm so excited to see what this young kid has to offer for the 2021. Next 15 years with him and Montez Sweat. This guy was a captain in his first year, being the vocal point of this team. He was just phenomenal this year, and nobody is more deserving than the defensive rookie of the year than one Chase Young. Him and Montez Sweat are going to rake havoc in the nation's capital 
for the next 15 years. Next player on my list is my favorite stud on this list, and that is Ronald Darby. This guy was phenomenal this year. I remember a lot of people did not like the move signing Ronald Darby, but this guy was phenomenal, man. He played his butt off this year. He led the league in pass breakups. He was phenomenal this year. He had his name conversation with Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard, Tredavious White, all the top tier corners. He was in that conversation. How good he was this year. He deserves a new contract, and I'm hopefully hoping that it's with us. Next player on my list was Deron Payne. Deron Payne was phenomenal this year, having his best year. I remember I was questioning the draft pick. I thought we had enough run stuffers on the team, and then we can, in fact, get a run stuffer in the back end of the draft. But this year was phenomenal by Deron Payne. The game evolved so much from the previous years, and it's just you can see a difference in Deron Payne this year. He was phenomenal in 2020. I hope he can build off that into 2021 and beyond. Next player on my list is Kevin Pierre-Lewis. Kevin Pierre-Lewis was phenomenal this year, man. I understand the stats doesn't show it, and he missed a couple games down the stretch, but he was phenomenal phenomenal this year it was just all about opportunity like Ron Rivera said a lot of these guys are good they just had to get the opportunity to start and Kevin Pierre Lewis took full advantage of his opportunity to start he was a stud all around the ball as far as making tackles goals I'm Cole Holcomb and if we could stick a phenomenal middle linebacker in there a young middle linebacker whether that's free agency or a draft we'll have the best defense in all of football next player on my list is Cameron Curl the seven round stud the seven round diamond in the rough this guy was phenomenal this year he should have his name in a defensive rookie of the year conversation but obviously he's not because he's not the more popular guys we all know the defensive rookie of the year is a popularity contest but if you want to look at stat wise and him playing Cameron Curl was so much better than Jeremy Chen it, no competition Jeremy Chen is good and all but he was nowhere near Cameron Curl Cameron Curl was bought in the seventh round of the draft we got him in the seventh round of the draft another steal by Kyle Smith and he was a complete stud coming in, in for the injured safeties and he just never looked back as soon as he got his opportunity so stud goes to Cameron Curl. Next player on my list is DeShazer Everett. DeShazer Everett was phenomenal. This is yet another guy that stayed patient and got his opportunity. This guy was on special teams, a special teams captain and he finally got his opportunity to start and he took full advantage of it and unfortunately came to the hands of his buddy Landon Collins but next man up approach that he had and he took full advantage of it up until his injury and I'm so excited to see what we have with Cameron Curl and DeShazer ever into the future. They could be the next duo. I can't wait to see what they have in 2021 and speedy recovery for my boy DeShazer Everett. And speaking of taking advantage of injuries, next player on my list, Jeremy Reed. Phenomenal season and how short it was. You know, you got to be ready. Like he said, he said, shout out to Ron Rivera for getting him a chance and not going with another guy because he took advantage of it. And the safety depth, you can't be more happy excited about this safety depth that we have on this roster. Jeremy Reeves, DeShazer Everett, Cameron Curl all balled out this year. And I'm excited to see what these young guys have to offer in 2021. Honorable mentions for studs is obviously Jonathan Allen and Tim Settle. Jonathan Allen, I understand you guys want to put him as stud, but in my opinion, he really was lacking. In, he was really lacking consistency. I mean, every game he would show up here and there, but he would just never be consistent. That's the big thing with John Allen. Other than that, John Allen would be a stud, and with Tim Settle, it's pretty much the same thing. Him not being consistent like Deron Payne, he was relatively consistent throughout the 2020 Move campaign. Duds. As much as this pains me, Ryan Carey is on this list as a dud and I know a lot of people are going to attack me for this. They didn't break the franchise sack record this year but this guy just you can tell they lost the step at 32 years old. He just wasn't the same Ryan Kerrigan. He didn't get his snaps. He is the GOAT of the franchise. The face of the franchise. He really just wasn't the same anymore. 32 years old. It was time for him to move on. He feels like he has a lot more to give in this league and I honestly believe that Ryan Kerrigan played his last snap as a Burgundy and GOAT. Remember I understand the franchise records for sacks this year but he just wasn't the same. You could see it in his movements. He didn't get the snaps, and he was really a dud this season. Next player on my list was Troy Ackby. Troy Ackby was horrible this year. I honestly thought he was going to be something good because they were hyping him up in training camp. I mean, this guy was flying around the ball, making hits on his own guys, which we don't condone, but you can just see. He thought we had something in Troy Ackby, but he was just horrible this year, not knowing where to go to cover, not making tackles, taking bad angles. He was just horrible this year. Next player on my list was Landon Collins. Now, Landon Collins, I understand he got hurt, so his 2020 campaign got cut short, 
but when he did play, he was not really that good. And I keep saying this because I really mean it. He was not worth the $85 million. And if we move in the linebacker next year, I hope he takes a pay cut. But if not, we should let him walk because Landon Collins is coming off a torn Achilles. He might not be the same. He's going to take a while to recover. And it's just not looking bright for Landon Collins. Last player on my list is Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson, man, he was just horrible this year. Injuries, not being on the field. You remember when we thought we were going to trade him and actually get some out of him? Yeah, no. We're just going to let this guy walk. He was horrible. I really didn't like the pick when we made it in 2017. Really didn't think we needed another edge rusher in the second round. I really thought we could have went elsewhere with that pick. And us letting him walk in the 2020 free agency and letting him go. Ryan Anderson was a complete miss this year. With that being said, it's been Boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe. Hello to the Washington football team. That was my studs and does list of the 2020 season. What is you guys' studs and does list? Put it down in the comment section. Don't forget, I will be going live for a call-in show to recap the 2020 season tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. So make sure you guys be there. Like, comment, subscribe. Hello to the Washington football team. I'm out. Peace.